Hi, and welcome back. The topic for today is how we can compare two text strings to each other and output the result with something similar to the way Word does its track changes. So let's start by looking at a few text strings. A man walked in the park. And a boy walked in the park. Now as a human, I'm pretty sure you've already noticed the difference. Man was replaced by boy. If we have the same string, a man walked in the park, enable words track changes, and now delete the word man and simply write the word boy. We can see that word has inserted a strikeout red font and a blue color boy. So it's easy to see what was removed and what was added. If we want to do the same in Access, or in VBA in general, we can do this. We need to use a method called the longest common substring. I'm going to show you how it's done, and I'm going to make the source code freely available at my blog, www.thesmilecoder.com. But first I'm going to explain how we do this. Let's switch over to Excel, and I'll explain the logic behind this. Okay, so let's start by pasting in our two strings from before. A boy walked in the park, and a man walked in the park. So the method I'm going to be using is a method called longest common subsequence. Now before I start explaining the logic behind this, I just want to say that to use the code you can find in my blog, you don't actually need to understand any of all this. I merely wish to explain it for those who are interested. So don't fret it if you don't get it. So, in this area, we're going to create an array that will do all the comparisons for us. For simplicity in the array calculations, we'll start by adding a zero row and a zero column. So, this is the zero row, and this is the zero column. Now we're going to write a formula in this field. Start by taking the maximum value of the field right above, and the field directly to the left. To this, we'll add the actual comparison between the text strings. So I'll say if the string up here is equal to the string over here, I want to return a 1, and otherwise I want to return a 0. So this will basically take all the matches. I'll just add that it should always be the 7th row, and it should be the D column, so that I can copy-paste this formula to the rest of my array. Now the number down here, the 5, that is also known as the length of the longest common subsequence. This is to say that there are, between these two strings, there are f the longest sequence they have in common has the length of 5. The longest sequence these two have in common is actually this, A, and walked in the park. Now man is not common between these two, but a and walked in the park is common between these two. It doesn't matter that there are parts of the sequence that must be left out in order to form the sequence. It's still a, that's why we use the word subsequence and not just sequence. Remove this formatting again. Now to get from these two strings to the value we want, the combined string showing differences, we need to start backtracking through the array. We do this by starting in the bottom right field, I'll color that green. This is the field we start in. And as we move from this point to the top left, we take out words of each string until we have the combined result. The way in which we do this is by looking at the values above and to the left. So standing here, we can see above is 4 and to the left is 4. Since 4 equals 4, what we need to also do is look at the two strings, park and park. If these two are equal, this is part of our longest common subsequence. So I'll write the word park down here and then I'll move the active location up and to the left. 
I'd move up and left if the two strings are equal. Once again, 3 and 3, V and V. I move up and to the left. I do this a couple of times, and I now have walked in the park. This is part of my common subsequence. This is where it gets interesting. This is where we get to the point of the words man and boy, which are obviously not equal. So, standing here, I do see one and one, which are equal, and as I said, this makes me look at the words boy and man. In this case, since the two words are not equal, I move upwards. As I move upwards, I take the word over here and say this is the word that got added. So I'll write man, and I'll put this in the blue color. Standing here, I look directly above is a zero, and to the left is a one. So in this case, I have to move left. This means boy was deleted from my string. So I'll write boy down here and color this red. Finally, standing here, to the above me and to the left is a zero and a zero, which means I have to look at the strings, A and A. These two are equal, so I'll write A down here. As you can see, I now have a full string. As you can see, I now have the full string showing what was deleted and what was added. Switching over to Access Now, you can see the database that I have created and which you can download at my blog www.thesmileycoder.com Now there's a few things in it. There's a demo form which shows how you can type the original text, the new text, hit the compare button, and see the output down here. This is the output when it is placed in a plain text field, and this is the output when it is placed in a rich text field. You have to use Access 2007 or newer because that is the because that supports the rich text field. Without the rich text field, it's going to look like this, which is not that pretty. So we could try writing our own string up here. A man walked in the park. A boy walked in the park. We hit the button down here, and the code does the rest of it for us. If we want, we can also replace the case sensitive with a not case sensitive. This means that it will not pick up on this change, man and man with a capital. If we do add it again, you can see it will be able to pick up the change in capitalization. You can also choose that we don't want to compare word by word, but directly by character. This can be useful in some cases and not useful in other cases. As you can see here, it now shows only the M and the M, but I find this to be harder to read and doing it like this. There's also another test form. This is part of a requirement management tool which is intended to manage requirements for a big project. I wanted to be able to track the changes. Let's see how it works. If I write a new requirement, the canteen supplier must provide hot meals every day. I'll save this. If I click the history button, I can now see a report saying that this is actually the only requirement ID I have, or this is the only version of that requirement I have at this point. If I close the print preview again and try to make a change, saying this requirement is not accurate enough, the canteen supplier must provide hot meals every day at 12 o'clock and hit the save. If I click the history again, zoom in, we can now see a list of the requirements, sorry, a list of the versions, and seeing that in the newest version, this is what was added. This makes it much easier to see what has been changed in our database on a very accurate and detailed level. If you're interested in how this works, you would have to examine the parts behind the form and how the different versions are saved. But all the comparisons that you see here are done using my my um, comparison are done using my comparison code, and then output in a rich text field as part of the report. If you have any questions, 
you're quite welcome to contact me at my blog or comment there. There's also a short list of instructions here that you can see. The only module you need is to import the TSC compare module from this project. You can use the function directly in a query or in the control source of a form or report. The control used to display the result of the function must be rich text. If you store the result, which is not required, the result of the comparison, if you store it in a table, the table field must be plain text, and then you must set the display control to be rich text. If you try to store this text into a rich text field, Access will try to format it, and that will just end up looking ugly. So thank you for watching, and I hope you find this useful.